Hey guys, so welcome back. I hope we're all doing really well. I uh, have found a bit of an odd corner of my house today to film in um, because there are some building works going on all around me. I feel like every house on the street is getting something done to it and it's a bit of a pain to work with. So I've kind of lodged myself into this little spot. You probably will still be able to hear the noise going on, which I apologize for, but we have a fun video today. Um, I felt this has been a little bit long awaited and is my big seasonal Zara video. So I do this about twice a year, usually in summer and in autumn or spring and autumn because I feel like that is when Zara shines. Um, and they have some really, really good pieces this year that I'm excited to show you guys. So I wouldn't really say this is a proper haul. I didn't just go to Zara and buy a ton of stuff. I've sort of been collecting this over the last month, couple of months, um, and really thinking about which pieces that I wanted to add into my wardrobe. As you guys know, I'm trying to be a lot more cohesive with my purchases and only really invest in things that are going to stand the test of time, whether that is from the high street or higher end products. I think that is the best way to approach things, especially when it comes to buying high street clothes, because not all of us can afford to invest in things that are super super spenny um, so it's good to pick something out maybe one or two items that are really gonna work with your wardrobe I'm always gonna be a Zara lover I really am they're actually working a lot on their sustainability at the moment I think they have some really great goals set for the next couple of years or so and um, they've also been making products with more recycled materials which is always good to see I think every little really does help if a massive international company like Zara can be setting goals to be more sustainable in the future um, then I think that is a great way to be going. So let's start with coats. This little beauty here, I've already mentioned this and shown you guys this quite a few times. And this is my staple piece for autumn. You can quote me right here, a trench coat. Now, I don't think you can go wrong with a trench coat any day of the year, but especially in autumn, I feel like they just, it's their time to shine. And this is the ultimate trench coat. I am in love with this piece of clothing. It is wonderful. So I definitely look for a few things when it comes to buying a trench. I look for the colour. I like my trench coats to be a bit more along the darker side. If they're too light and too beige, I feel like it can just be quite washed out. I also always look for the buttons and the detailing. Tortoiseshell buttons are my favourite thing in life and this coat has plenty of them. And then the fit obviously is another big part of what I like to see in a trench coat. Now this one is super, super long line. It comes pretty much down to my ankles and that is what I was looking for. I just prefer the silhouette they give when they are a lot longer. If they're coming up to kind of knee height or just somewhere in the middle, they're not a short jacket and they're not a long coat, that to me is just kind of a no-go. I like them to be really long, or shorter so this one definitely ticks all the boxes for that and it's also such a great quality trench it's not lined but I wouldn't expect it to be but it is still a really nice heavy quality material so I'm gonna try everything on for you um, so you can see what it looks like when I'm wearing it um, and this one of course always always has to be in the background doesn't she let's just move on from that so the trench um, I'm not wearing anything too chunky underneath it I've just got this t-shirt on but you can see that it has a little bit more room, which I really, really like. Um, so it definitely is very much on the long side. Really comes just to a perfect point, actually, because it lets a little bit of trouser just peek through, um, which I think is great. If it went just slightly lower, it would be a bit too much. But I like that you can still see what I have underneath um, at the bottom there. And this one doesn't actually have a tie. I don't know if I mentioned that, but there is no tie around it. I personally really like that because I think the silhouette then is very um, just big and oversized. And there she goes. Anything fun down there? Always got to be the center of attention. Always. And then another absolute essential is, of course, the coat, your standard winter coat. And I always think a black winter coat is just the best kind of route to go down because, again, it's going to be so versatile. It's going to go with absolutely everything. There isn't much that you can't throw a black coat over. And with my coats, I kind of like to keep them a bit more tailored, a bit smarter. I particularly love a coat with a lapel. So you can see this one has quite big, chunky lapels, which I adore and also the sleeves here the cuffs have this kind of little 
tie around them with a button detail, which I think just adds a bit more. I always find it quite awkward with coats when they just go straight down at the wrist and then there's nothing really going on. I like to have that little detail, I think it really makes a difference. So this coat again is very, very long line. It's also a wool blend, so it's super, super warm. Really, really great at keeping the heat in. I have worn this quite a few times now. It's probably been, um, especially the last couple of weeks since it's freezing here, been my most reachable coat. Um, and like I say, I can just throw it on top of everything. So that is such a staple for me as well. It also has a tie. I'm not a massive fan of the tie when it comes to coats. I do think they sometimes look a little bit dressing gowny when you tie them up, but I do like the way they hang behind. So that again, gives a little bit of extra detail to the back of the coat. I immediately feel very comforted and cozy when I put this one on. Um, so lengthwise, you can see it is that little bit shorter, but still has a really great kind of long line length to it. The silhouette of this is actually really nice because although it has the big lapels, it also does just drop straight down. And it's not double breasted, so it, it does leave this nice gap to sort of peek through the rest of your clothes. I know a lot of people um, don't understand the concept of not doing your coat up. And actually this one doesn't have any buttons, it just has the tie. So you could do it up that way, but personally I like to leave it open. I feel like it's big, oh yeah, <laughs> big and baggy enough to just really keep the heat and the warmth in. So that is how I like to wear it, that may be controversial. I really love these cuffs, I don't know if you can see them a little bit better now that the lighting's changed, but they have just a nice, they're quite big, but they're cinched in with that little tie. Um, and I like the detail that that gives. So next, let's talk about something a little bit lighter, but still outerwear, a blazer. So this blazer is kind of very oversized. It has that really vintage vibe that I've been loving with blazers recently. It's almost like your dad or your boyfriend could have given it to you. It actually has a very kind of drapey feel to it. The material, which is viscose, is very soft, so, so soft. It's also got a bit more of a, a boxy fit again. Um, perfect if you're looking for that oversized kind of vintage look. I did size up with this quite a bit. I got an extra large, normally I would go for medium. So I think if you were gonna get this in a regular size, it would be slightly more tailored, a bit more form-fitting. Um, but for me, I always like to size up when it comes to blazers because of that. Another really key piece in autumn as well because they're so great for layering. I can put this on top of a t-shirt like I have now, or I can put a jumper underneath it, really keep the warmth in that way. I can just wear it on its own, or I can even put a coat on top of this. A really simple one, but again, a blazer, especially a neutral colored beigey blazer. Can't go wrong with it, definitely not. I feel like this is one of those pieces that doesn't really say a lot on the hanger, but as soon as you're wearing it, it, it just makes a lot of sense. You can see what I mean about this very like boxy shape. It does feel very square. And I think that's probably because I did go a few sizes up. It makes the shoulder pads here just a little bit further out. My normal, my natural shoulder finishes about here. And then you have a kind of extra inch of shoulder pad. But that to me again, is just that perfect vintage inspired fit. I feel like this one is oversized without being too dramatically kind of like, who are you trying to smuggle? underneath your coat type feeling. The color is so nice on this one. I like that it is a little bit darker. These button, black button details are also very, very cute. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably been seeing me wearing pretty much nothing but a white shirt recently. I have become such a lover of a white shirt. There is nothing more simple and crisp and clean than a white collared shirt. This one again, I've gone for in a quite oversized look. Funnily enough, this is actually a small, which is one size down from what I would normally take. When things are actually made to be oversized, especially in Zara, I find I have to go a size down. And when things are normal and I want them oversized, I have to go a few sizes up. So that's always something to, to have to think about. I actually have two of these shirts. This is a newer one that I haven't worn yet because the first one I pretty much wore every single day for about a week. And I just love the way it looked, particularly tucked in to maybe not jeans, but more of a tailored trouser, which I will show you guys a few pieces later. And just in general, I think it's a really good starting piece. If you have no idea what to wear and you're kind of stuck for choices, pick up your white shirt and then build from there. That's the kind of thing that I tend to do when it comes to planning out outfits in my head. I usually start with one item of clothing, something that's a bit more of a staple or a basic, 
and really take it from there. So I wanted to show you the shirt first untucked just so you get an idea for sizing. Uh, I wouldn't probably wear it like this unless I had something on top, like a jumper, to layer and just let little bits poke out. But you can see that it is oversized, but still kind of works for me. Um, so this I would definitely tuck in. I would either go for like a one-sided tuck and just have half of it showing, or I would tuck both sides in like that. And this is, is how I would prefer to wear it um, if I just have the shirt on its own. This one is a little bit newer, um, unlike the one that I have been wearing a ton. So the core is a little bit stiffer, but it definitely softens out. And I quite like it when it's slightly more open like that. I also think having the pocket here is a great um, little detail. Sometimes when shirts don't have anything here, um, they're pocketless and you just see the white like on this side, it can be a little bit too plain. I think having that detail just kind of gives it that extra something, um, which I like a lot. So love, love, love white shirts. I've absolutely been living in this one. I'm actually really happy that I have a second to use now um, so I can rotate them properly through the wash. I really have gone for the basics this time around. I've really stuck to my basic colors, basic pieces, just things that I can really wear all together or layer up with anything else. Um, this may look very simple, but it has already been one of my most worn um, pieces of clothing. And also guys, before you get a little bit terrified, all my knitwear are on these hangers for the purposes of this video. Do not fear, I will be folding them up afterwards. I always get that comment and um, I know it freaks you guys out, so I'm sorry about that. So this is a really simple, basic, very, um, I wouldn't say cropped, but just waist height jumper. It's kind of somewhere between a top and a jumper because it's thin. I particularly love the cut of this. It's like a drop shoulder almost. And at the bottom, it actually has just a cut um, hem. It hasn't been hemmed there, which I think is quite cool, that raw edge. Basically, this is your perfect kind of layering item again. Um, the color is great because I can work this into a lot of different outfits. And it's just a really soft material too. I think this one is actually called soft something. I'll leave everything linked down below if you guys are wanting to check these out and see what they look like. But they do this whole range of the soft feel um, material in different clothes. They have jumpers and trousers, things like that. And it is beautiful. It's just what you want wrapped around your body in autumn. So I think you can see the length a lot better now. It's a really kind of awkward length, but I like that a lot. I'm wearing high-waisted trousers now and I don't feel the need to tuck this in. Um, I probably could do, but I quite like it just left loose. And I think that raw hem uh, works really well like that. You can see it really just drapes and flows so nicely. It's maybe a little bit on the see-through side, perhaps um, nude underwear would have been a better choice. The neckline you can see kind of better now. It, it definitely comes quite high and it has that very crew neck vibe to it, but it almost scoops out a little bit. So it comes slightly more down here along the shoulder and the neck. The drop is quite nice. It's not too big and oversized, but it, it just gives that more Casual vibe, and then the sleeves are really nice length on this too. So that is what this one looks like. Also, I then have another um, jumper. This is definitely more your kind of staple knitwear piece. Zara obviously are known for their knitwear. They do it very, very well. And this one in particular, I like a lot. It's got a really nice oversized feel to it. It's not too long. I don't think it's the best when really chunky jumpers are too long because it's just a bit awkward to kind of work with the length. It's a wool blend so I'd say the itchiness factor of this one is is like a low to medium. I have been wearing tops layered underneath this because the knit is a little bit more forgiving. It definitely has some breathability to it which I think is really good. If you get a jumper that's just too heavy and your skin can't breathe in, that's never gonna be a good thing. And again, it's kind of got this like drop shoulder feel to it. I think that's definitely the vibe Zara are going with on um, their knitwear and tops and pieces like that. It definitely has that more forgiving, oversized look to it. Um, not really much more I can say about a basic black jumper, but I think it is a really, really great piece. I do really, really enjoy the neck on this jumper. I think it is the perfect height. It's not too high and it's not too low, it's just, I like the perfect in between. So you can see I've, I've tucked this in and it's kind of looked perfect for that. It's not too long, just comes down a bit at the back, but then also um, just worn as is, um, works really well too. I can see this working really well with the shirt underneath it too. So just having that little pop of color coming through and then the shirt underneath it layering up like that would be great. That is something that I'm probably gonna do now that I've mentioned it. So yeah, perfect black staple oversized jumper. Okay, so next I have 
something that I don't normally talk about a lot in videos or even wear at all, but something about this really caught my eye and I had so many ideas on how to style it when I saw it. So this is, I'd call it a cardigan for sure. It's more of a wrap kind of thing. It has this tie here at the back and you can leave it untied. You can definitely just let that sit like that and wear it as a more traditional cardigan or I actually quite like to tie it and just wear it as a top, whether that's on its own or with a t-shirt underneath like this one. I think that layering of necklines is, is quite a cool thing to do. It is so, so incredibly soft. It has a very fine knit to it, but feels really, really good to wear. Itch factor is absolutely zero on this. It is so, so nice to feel on your skin. And I'm kind of enjoying styling a cardigan because it's not really something I've ever worn. I think because this really drops straight down here and there's no detailing or buttons and things like that, it kind of just works a lot better for me than other cardigans have in the past. And also with the tie, I think having that back there is a really cute detail, but I do, like I said, like having it tied up as well. This is definitely an outfit that I have worn before, this um, light pair of jeans and then a very similar coloured cardigan. I love the way this looks like tied up and that V tie style, like a wrap vibe. I, I just really like it a lot. The sleeves as well are kind of like three quarter length sleeves, which I like because I do tend to mostly roll my sleeves up. So that just kind of solves the problem for me. I won't show you how this looks undone because I'm not wearing a top underneath it, um, but I think you can kind of get the idea. Really so, so soft. And probably one of the only things that I am not tucking in. I am such a massive fan of the tuck. I'm sure you all know. Um, I usually tuck everything in. And this one, I do not feel the need to. So that is a first. So I want to talk about some bottoms now, some trousers more specifically. I feel like I'm on an ever long quest to not wear jeans as often. I say that now wearing a pair of jeans, but I have three things here that are not denim in the slightest. I'm quite excited about that. So where to begin? I'm gonna start actually with this pair here because again, I've talked about these a little bit before and you guys might have seen them. Uh, and I feel like they are very much the flavor of the month. This is the pair of faux leather trousers. And yes, I am having my Ross from Friends moment. Let me live my life, I love them. Um, but really, leather trousers are a massive trend at the moment. And I don't usually like to buy into trend pieces because again, like I said at the beginning, I like to keep things cohesive and I wanna be wearing this stuff for a long time, not just this season. I think, however, leather trousers like something along the lines of leopard print is um, a piece of clothing or an item that comes around quite a lot. I don't really think they ever completely go out of style. I thought I would have to shop around um, and really hunt for a good pair of leather trousers that suited me um, and my shape, my body, and something that I actually enjoyed wearing as well. And this is the first pair I tried and I loved them. I instantly thought they were perfect. They have just the right amount of detailing on the front here. They have I'd say these are like half pockets, um, they're more there just for the way they look, but the seams go all the way down the leg as well as straight across here. And something about that just really breaks up the big pieces of um, faux leather, which sometimes can look just a bit too much and overwhelming. They're high-waisted, which is great, that's what I was looking for, but they don't hug completely skin tight. They definitely have a bit more room to them, they're slightly more forgiving, kind of more of a slouchy trouser look, and I, I really like that. I think that works really well for me. The one thing I have to say is, they are very warm. <laughs> I have definitely had that moment where I get home and just pull them down and breathe a sigh of relief because they really seal everything in. But on the plus side, they are gonna keep you super warm um, this winter when I think it's gonna be especially cold. This is probably an outfit that you have seen me wear already quite a bit. Um, I've really been liking the way the white shirt looks with these trousers and then trench coat on top and that is me done. So they are really nice and high-waisted. They're great, um, a great height for actually tucking things in if you want to or just sort of letting hang out either way. Um, these are actually pockets. I wasn't sure if they were, but they definitely are. Um, they just add to that detailing like I was talking about on the front, which I like a lot. I have to say, I think these trousers are really flattering. You may disagree with me, but as far as leather trousers go, I was not expecting to like wearing them quite as much as I do. They definitely have that good oversized fit to them, which I like. They have that slight bit of slouchiness around the knees. Someone agrees with me. You like my trousers, do you? Okay, so now um, 
I have another pair of trousers. Now these are kind of similar in fit, but they are slightly different. They are very long. So whereas the leather one's more ankle height, these ones definitely go all the way down. I really love this chino style of trousers, this very kind of oversized, almost masculine fitting, androgynous type of trouser. Um, so again, this is something that I've been looking for quite a while. I've been trying on a few different pairs. And these, I have to say, I really, really like. I like the color of them a lot. They're a great neutral beige. Again, these are high-waisted. I think these ones actually come up really high on me, which I like. I always will go for a high-waisted fit over a, a low. And I really like the way um, these slightly more kind of smart trousers can be dressed down so I wouldn't necessarily wear this with a shirt and a blazer and keep it really really smart looking I would definitely go for these with a pair of trainers um, maybe a pair of like chunky boots like docks definitely with um, a chunky jumper over the top or just something very um, kind of casual and I think that casual paired with the smart look of the trousers and this being like the focal point is a really cool way to wear them so you can see these are actually quite high-waisted, they actually pull me in quite a bit here. Um, I probably could have gone for a size up in these, but then I would have lost some of that tailoring, I think, more so in the legs, because they are a little bit more slouchy and baggy here. I do really like this detail here, um, along the stomach, these little pin tucks I think are great, anything to kind of detract from that area is always a plus. Um, and the length on these is really nice, they're perfect ankle height on me. And they have just the right cut there, they're not super sort of drain pipey or too tight down there, they have a little bit of room, a little bit of give. So I could definitely wear some boots either tucked underneath these, or maybe even with them tucked in, that would be an option. Or even just like a pair of flats, some loafers would be great with these, or some trainers. I just really like the color and I think they're a really great kind of casual trouser. So the third pair of trousers I have here are very much along the lines of the last. They have that same tailored look to them. They definitely are a little bit more along the smart side, fitted. The material is very, very similar. Um, and also the detailing here at the top of the waist. But the difference with these ones is they are a wide leg pair and they are super, super long. They definitely come almost down to the floor on me and that's when I'm wearing shoes. And I've been looking for a pair of black, tailored, slouchy trousers like this for a really long time. This is actually what started off my search and then I came across the beige ones during that. But these really are one of the pieces that I just don't have anything like in my wardrobe and really wanted to add. So like I said, this Kind of styled down in a very casual way is just exactly <laughs> exactly what I wanted to wear and I have to say now going from being kind of like a nine to five jeans wearer to having these type of trousers more available to me and in my wardrobe I think I'm converted because they are so comfortable to wear when you're used to wearing high-waisted jeans and then you go to something like this it is bliss it is heaven you feel so free so these trousers wow 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 um they are definitely very different to to what i'm used to wearing i'm more a fan of like a skinny style straight leg jean so these are very different for me but this wide leg it's kind of like the juxtaposition of them being quite smart tailor trousers but then at the same time dressed down in a very cozy kind of way. Um, these may be a little bit bigger, I could have gone for a size down, but I wanted to keep that very like loose, flowy feeling to them. Again, like you found a pair of vintage men's trousers in a charity shop and they're not quite your size, but it, it sort of works. That is definitely the vibe I was going for with these. Um, I particularly like it with this outfit here, so the little white top. I'd probably wear this with just a pair of trainers um, and leave it at that. I'm gonna delve down to the bottom here and it's time to talk accessories, more specifically shoes. Second only to my love of coats are shoes and these, well, I, I'm gonna gush about these for the next two minutes, just be aware. So a chunky boot like this is really, I think the only thing you need in autumn. In years gone past, I've definitely been more into the kind of heel boots, something a little bit more slimmer, more of a fancy boot. Um, whereas these are definitely more of a casual boot. They're really quite stompy in the best way possible though. Um, and thick soled. Can't believe that the price point of these is so low, especially for Zara. Sometimes their boots are quite a bit, sometimes they're not. But the quality of these and just the thickness of the sole and how durable they are. There's this really interesting sock detailing along the top here. It's almost like ribbed. 
kind of reminds me of the elastic you get in a Chelsea boot, but it goes all the way round. So they definitely have that kind of tighter look around the ankle, and then they are really chunky here at the bottom. The sole is so great. You're not gonna be slipping over anywhere in these. And just really thick and really surprisingly quite comfortable to wear. So these are my absolute favorite pick for a pair of autumn boots this season. I also have these um, really cute little pair which are very different now i i think heels actually come in to my dressing and my wardrobe a lot more this season than they do um in summer you typically associate something very sandily like this with summer but for me i think when it comes to christmas parties going out this time of year it's definitely more when i reach for the heels and i just stick to my flats in summer this whole kind of trend of a heeled flip-flop is something that I am on board with. I enjoy it. I feel like these are gonna be a little bit Marmite to some people, um, especially with, uh, I'd almost call it like a kitten heel. I know we feel strongly about those, but personally as someone who has zero balance and cannot wear anything over two inches, I am a fan of the kitten heel. I think they're really great for a day heel too. Um, maybe not so much at the moment because your toes will fall off if you wear these in the day, but not only with a more dressy look, jeans as well, these would work so well with. I really, really like them. I like the square toe as well, which is obviously quite a thing at the moment. I think it is super 90s and amazing. And that's definitely what these shoes embody, that kind of 90s vibe, and I love that a lot. So last of all, I wanna show you guys these two handbags. Now normally, I don't really shop on the high street for handbags. I tend to stick to the few higher end purchases that I have because I like to get my money's worth when I invest in things like that. But I had to pick these up and you're gonna guess why instantly. So these just scream, Bottega, Bottega, Bottega to me. They are kind of Zara's mock ripoff of the Bottega Veneta pouch bag. Zara are, love it or hate it, very good at picking up on designer styles and not necessarily completely ripping them off, but definitely making something very much inspired by them. And I mean, my thinking of that is, as long as it is not an absolute knockoff, um, and it's more just got the same feel and vibe to it and it's going to be something that you can get for a fraction of the cost Then why not go for it? So I wanted to show you guys these if you tuck the handle in they definitely do have that very slouchy big pouch Vibe which is definitely where they've gotten from the Bottega ones and I have used this a lot because a pouch bag actually is very handy You can fit your life in it really um, It's a great small little clutch, but you can get a ton in it and the Zara ones do come with the strap, which isn't removable, but like I said, you can just tuck them in. And I actually really like the way these look crossbody. They're actually really great little handy bags for every day and also perfect for the evening too. I do struggle when it comes to evening bags because I never really know what to do there. Um, but this has that casual kind of cool vibe that I generally tend to stick to but it's definitely more evening appropriate. So these I think are a bit of a steal. Um, I'm not sure if they're still available now, but they should be. So I will link them down below if I can. Okay guys, that is my autumn Zara haul for 2019. I hope you've enjoyed that. I uh, feel like I say this in pretty much every <laughs> Zara video that I make, but I think this is my favorite yet. I'm really so stoked with everything here um so i hope you guys are too and i hope you enjoyed watching this um i'm gonna leave you all here that is it for me today and i will see you all soon bye